So welcome our first uh, corporate interaction on the show today. We have uh, Cosmo first. Uh, it's been a bit of an underperformer this year, largely because of global factors, factors in the packaging industry. Pankaj Podar, Group CEO, joins in now to discuss their business outlook going forward and if the worst is over or not. Pankaj, thank you for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. You know, the question, of course, is how has demand been, especially in Europe? And what's your current split between specialty, non-specialty? Is the worst behind you? Yeah, hi, good morning. Let me segregate the business into two parts. One is our uh, age-old business of films, uh, which again, I'll break it down into BOPP and polyester uh, later on. And the new age businesses that we have started in the recent year. So first talking about films, uh, BOPP fee seats fairly balanced in demand and supply. Uh, however, the unfortunate part is that uh, better sense is still to prevail in the domestic market. Uh, companies are not realizing that, you know, if they're adding capacities, they have to uh, take the role what China did uh, in the earlier years of uh, doing more exports. I feel the overall export market for us has been getting better. It's obviously not near the normals. Uh, however, this recent tragedy of, uh, sh you know, shipping has, is obviously causing some nerve breakdowns uh, in last two, three days. But irrespective, I generally feel that the export market is getting better. Uh, and in next few quarters, it should stabilize barring US, which is still a question mark whether it will have a soft landing or a hard landing. Actually, interesting, Pankaj, you brought up this uh, whole shipping issue, right, uh, at the Red Sea. You said it's it's uh, causing some nerve, in nervous uh, energy everywhere. For Cosmo first, for your industry particularly, what do you think the impact would be? To be honest, you know, the uh, 16 containers that were there on this particular ship, uh, our containers were also there on this. Uh, however, uh, what has been confirmed is there is no damage to this and obviously these are fully insured. So financially, there should not be an impact. In the short term, there could be some positive impact uh, because, you know, consumers will tend to buy more. Uh, however, in the, you know, in, in, in things which are in the transit, uh, customers are a bit worried in terms of in the normal course, it was taking 30 days. It may take uh, 45 days because of the new routes. Uh, so next one month, we'll have to uh, stay very, very close in terms of uh, how this is uh, folding up, uh, customers are fully aware and we take necessary actions so that, uh, you know, customers uh, keep getting their material. Okay, so as of now, you don't see a risk in terms of financials. The next one month is when you're probably going to assess the risks uh, with regards to what's happening in the shipping environment. I feel, in the, as I said earlier, in the short term, there should be a, a positive impact because of this. Uh, which is temporary again in nature because, you know, customers will end up buying more. They will stock up more because the lead times have gone up. This is very similar to COVID where, again, our exports really went up. And uh, same situation is emerging now where uh, exports will go up because uh, customers are aware of uh, this fact that transit times have gone up. So uh, in the short term, this is my personal belief that this will have more positive impact than the negative impact. But in the medium term, it will neutralize and again, uh, for some period, the demand will get back to normal or get, you know, go a little down and then get back to normal. Uh, the other so, thing in the, hmm. you know, the other thing that I would like to talk about in the films is that, you know, we had put up the polyester line last year. And, uh, you know, obviously, since the time we have put it up, uh, uh, there's uh, too much of extra capacity which has come up in Bopet. And actually, our line was supposed to be more for speciality and we were struggling with our shrink film. Uh, and... Uh, uh, December is the first month when uh, the supplier got rid of all the issues and the machine is uh, working very well. Uh, we had a very good uh, long run in uh, December. And uh, speciality, which has right now touched only 5% uh, in our portfolio, we feel that even in the BOPET, we will be able to take it up to 15% uh, overall speciality. And uh, this particular line, which has been making losses since the time we have uh, installed it, uh, should now start making uh, should start doing break even uh, on an immediate basis and in the months or quarters to come it should start making money as well and in the films business uh, if i just wanted to you know uh, recollect you, what, what is your specialty mix right now earlier it used to be 64 65 it had dropped to 57 in the middle what is it stand at right now so it has gone back to 65 percent uh, obviously uh, as i said some of the markets are not really uh, up to the mark but the good thing is that last three four months a speciality has really picked up, so it went down to 57, and and the traction in most of the segments is uh, much better now, uh, barring one segment where uh, we are yet to see the revival of the growth, and 
customers continuously been telling that uh, 2024 should be a much better year. And hopefully then we'll be able to take it to 68 to 70 percent in next uh, one or two quarters. So do we see better margins for your business? Because I remember at peak, you know, it was around 18 to 20 odd percent. Last few quarters, it's been uh, sub 10 percent as well. What kind of margins do we expect in FY24? And what does your FY25 picture look like in terms of revenues and margins? So see, when the whole industry is making losses and Cosmo is able mm. to make close digit EBITDA, mm. that itself, uh, you know, I personally feel that we have done a good job in the last uh, few years uh, because seven, eight years back, we were in the same boat when the industry was making losses, we were making losses. So one side, yes, our EBITDA margins have come down. And as I said, the domestic market continues to reel under pressure. And to be honest, BOPP should not be under as much pressure as it is. And maybe one or two players are, you know, continuously keeping prices lower to sell their volumes, which to me is not a very good strategy. So it's very difficult to say when the domestic margins will pick uh, pick up again. Uh, in fact, they have gone down in last uh, one quarter. Uh, and to me, uh, this is insane and it should get better uh, in the times to come. But the, for the time being, uh, I would not say that results would improve because the domestic margins continue to struggle. What we are really improving is our speciality uh, you know, taking it back to 65% levels and the quarters we feel it should uh, go to 68 to 70%. So overall, you're saying domestic margins will continue to struggle. I mean, you're barely now at double digit, right? Almost, I think 11%. Uh, you think there is a possibility of getting into single digit margins as well? See, 1 or 2% here and there can always be possible uh, for the simple reason that, uh, you know, as I said earlier, that uh, one side our export margins have gone up while the domestic margins have come down. Uh, so we have to really see this quarter and normally quarter three is the uh, weakest amongst all the four quarters because of Christmas and Diwali. Uh, we are post uh, Diwali and immediately for the Christmas time the uh, demand comes down for us. So we have to really see this quarter but as I said it should be around 10% and uh, uh, better sense should prevail domestic margins must go up because uh, BOPP demand supply is quite balanced. And the good news is that even in the polyester line where we were making losses, uh, we should start touching break even now. And in the quarters to come, irrespective of the bad market, we will start making some money on our polyester line. Okay, just quickly, Pankaj, before we wrap this up, your pet care business, uh, you know, there was a huge surge in terms of pet care post COVID. But is that sustaining? What's the outlook in terms of, say, the monthly run rate for the business? Are you looking at further fundraising simply because of the opportunity available? Yeah, so pet care definitely during COVID period had an abnormal growth uh, because people had a lot of ample time. Uh, that has normalized now back to 10 to 15 percent in my view. Uh, again, looking, uh, you know, what the I would say the experts say in this industry is that in the next three, four years, this industry will have a very, very fast growth for the simple reason that the average family size in India, at least in bigger cities, uh, will come to a certain threshold level uh, from where the pet care, uh, you know, where people will start to adopt more pets. Uh, so that period is yet to come when this industry will again have 20, 25, 30% growth, uh, which will take three, four years. Uh, irrespective, the growth itself is quite nice of 10 to 15%. And, uh, uh, you know, we have now reached a, a monthly GMV of 3.5 crore. So if you really track our numbers quarter on quarter, we are uh, growing by 50, 60 lakhs per month of GMV. And, uh, you know, what we are really doing in pet care, see our grooming has done exceedingly well. Our online sales is continuously picking up. And so is our, uh, you know, so is our uh, overall product sale. Uh, what we are now uh, focusing a lot more because we are a digital ecosystem, uh, omni-channel ecosystem. So what we're really now focusing is to bring many more senior vets into our fold. Uh, that is one of the focus areas so that uh, we can develop. And, you know, vets is really uh, the center stage of this industry. So... Uh, we intend to bring more senior vets, uh, strengthen our vet practice. Uh, now is the time for us to bring house brands where the gross margin should be better. And then we also intend to launch a very strong membership plan, especially on the services uh, for mm -hmm. our customers so that uh, you know they can tie in and they can continue to enjoy our services and uh, products that we offer. So this 124, 125 crore revenue target that you had for next year in pet care holds, right? Uh, no, we never said for the next year, but uh, I mm. feel that we should be, uh, next year should be close to, uh, I mean, 75 will be on a conservative basis, on an aggressive basis will be close to 100 crores. Uh, till now, we are tracking as per uh, the numbers that we had given to the market. 
Oh, okay, all right, uh, Pankaj, we're going to let you go on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that is Cosmo talking about their business.